thank you for the introduction. Uh, thank you for the invitation to talk here. Uh, I will, okay, the, the title is here. Uh, the subject of my talk, uh, okay, my, my own interest to the subject grows from, uh, arises from after the paper by Oleg Lysavy, uh, Kola Yorgov and Sasha Gamayun, uh, uh, who shows that uh, tau function for Penleve equations, not, for example, for the most gen generic Penleve 6 equation, can be, has explicit expression in terms of conformal blocks for Verasora algebra, or if you want Negrasov partition function for SU2 theory, and this fact has many generalizations, so this is why I came to the subject. And I was a beginner in this Penleve theory, and I start my talk with uh, some facts about, Pen this, about the Penleve theory. And, then, and this, uh, the subject of my talk is a uh, uh, deformation of the, the conjecture of Kamayun, Yorgov, and Lysavy. The subject, the main result of Q deformation of conjecture is another conjecture. Okay. Uh, I'll stay here. Uh, okay, I start from the Penleve equations. It is known that there are six Penleve equations, but it is convenient to decompose one of them into three. So we have Penleve 6, 5, three versions of Penleve 3 equation, Penleve 4, Penleve 2, and Penleve 5, 1. And uh, in this uh, diagram, uh, each arrow stands for degenerations confluence of uh, for this equation and uh, it is easy to see on the level of parameters so Penle the most uh, generic one Penleve 6 has four parameters Penleve 5 has three complex parameters and so on and the most degenerate ones Penleve 3 3 and Penleve 1 uh, has both of them have uh, no parameters uh, for each Penleve equation, uh, one can assign uh, a certain rational surface. So this is a uh, geometric approach to Penleve equation. Uh, originally, they were introduced as a second-order differential equation without movable uh, branching points. But uh, there's a, another approach to them is geometrically due to Akamoto. Uh, for each uh, Penleve equation, we assign rational surface as written here. And... Uh, for such rational surface, uh, we have so-called inaccessible divisor, in other terms, vertical leaves. And intersection form of the components of this inaccessible divisor uh, is the same as intersection form on uh, the scalar product on the uh, affine root lattice. So to each Penleve equation, one can assign affine root lattice. And they are written here the color magenta. Uh, uh, the arrows here, uh, in terms of the root lattice, uh, the arrows are very simple. We just add one node to the corresponding root, uh, not a fine root lattice, if you want. Uh, and good news that uh, today I will speak about a very concrete example, one of the most degenerate of two more degenerate Penleve equation, Penleve 3, which assigned to the root lattice D8. Here's, I put it in the box. So this is uh, somehow general picture, and if you want, you can forget it. And Exceptional series. I don't know. Maybe you'll explain the question <laughs> better after the talk. I maybe I'll say more. But probably the same answer. I don't know. <laughs> okay. So as I, as I said, I will, I will concentrate on this degenerate equation. So let's proceed. First of all, this is a second order nonlinear differential equation, which has no parameters. And this is one of the conventional forms of it. It is, of course, it's not necessary to remember, but just to be explicit, I put it here. Another form, which is much more 
easy to remember. It is a bilinear form of this equation. Uh, it is convenient to rewrite this equation as a system of two, I said, tau-like bilinear equations uh, on two functions, two tau function, tau and another I denote by tau one. The second two, so two equations, uh, D2 is, uh, as usual, Hiroto, uh, second Hiroto operator with respect to logarithm. Uh, it, I omit formula how to write tau in terms of W. Uh, formula in opposite direction is W of Z is equal to this ratio. Um, for this equation, we, can, we also have a uh, symmetry. Uh, for Penelope's six equation, the group of background transformations is very interesting. It's uh, extended a fine uh, real group of D4. But here, this uh, group is uh, finite, uh, just group of order two. It's, uh, we have only one non-trivial transformation, which I denote by pi, such that p pi squared is equal to one. And this uh, transformation acts in terms of term functions very simple, man and maps tau to tau one and vice versa. And in terms of w, this is just z, uh, w goes to z over w. And this is clear from this formula. And probably I also mentioned, uh, uh, so this equation has algebraic solution. So uh, generic solution of this equation is, uh, cannot be expressed in terms of any sort of another elementary function. Uh, so solutions of Penleve equations are some sort of trans transcendental function which are not uh, equal to anything else. I mean, now we know that they are very related to conformal blocks, but they are not hypergeometric, not elliptic, and so on and so on. And uh, I, th I think this equation doesn't have a hypergeometric solution, this doesn't have elliptic solution, but have one or even, better to say, two algebraic solution, just W is equal to square root of Z plus minus. And the corresponding tau function is exponent up to some simple factor. Mm, appearance of square roots has, of course, certain geometric uh, origin. So you see there is no square roots in the original equation, but we have them in the solution. Uh, probably also comment that the solution is a, okay, as written here, is invariant on the backward transformation and general, some kind of general phenomenon. Okay. It was a very short course on the Penleve equation. Now I come to the relation between these Penleve equations and uh, conformal blocks. So this is a formula which was conjectured by Kamayun Yorgov in 2011. That's the tau function of the Penleve, of Penleve, this Penleve 3 equation has this explicit formula. Uh, now what is written here? Uh, we have two variables, uh, two parameters, S and sigma, which are uh, integration constants in terms of the original Penleve equation. Recall that this equation is, has, is of order two, so uh, a generic solution should depend on two complex parameters. S and sigma are the two parameters. Uh, uh, S appears here. Uh, um, uh, this formula is, has per, uh, clear periodicity property with respect to S. With respect to sigma, if we shift sigma by sigma plus one, then tau function multiplies by the number. And as usual, tau function is defined up to constant multiple, so constant with respect to z multiple, so this factor is not essential. Uh, this, uh, this is the power, and this function c is an explicit function uh, given in, uh, in this form given this form, one over product of two Barnes G functions. And Barnes G function, I recall, uh, is no, uh, uh, satisfies this functional equation and is a special solution of this functional equation. Uh, this is about the red part of the formula. Now, I don't know whether it's visible, about green part of this f formula, this function f of delta z is a Whittaker limit of Virasora conformal block. Delta is the highest weight of the 
corresponding representation in which we calculate conformal block if you want conformal dimension. And the central charge is not written here since during my talk, central charge will be equal to one. So this is explicit formula. And this formula relates one sort of trans uh, one uh, sort of transcendental functions, namely tra uh, tau function of Mendeley equations, to another sort of transcendental functions, conformal blocks. And they are more or less the, this uh, space of functions are more or less equivalent. This is the meaning of this formula. Okay, it was a conjecture five years ago. They, uh, motivation. they have certain uh, motivation from conformal field theory, certain explanation in terms of conformal field theory based on fermionic uh, realization of the uh, C equal 1 so can be represented in terms of fermions. And also they represent not Penlevea, but correspond to isomonodromy problem in terms of fermions. Uh, but this is some sort of speculation. There was some sort of speculation. Uh, another motivation was that this series wa was not known, but uh, first terms were, un were known uh, due to Jimbo. And then they calculated the uh, next terms and realized that it's actually conformal block. Mm. So I don't have a short answer about motivation, you see. <laughs> it's just they have some motivation. We, we Another comment is this function is a Nikrasa partition function for pure SU2 theory due to HGT relation. So since uh, uh, Nikrasa partition function is given by explicit combinatorial formula, summation of partitions and so on, so in this sense this is an explicit combinatorial formula for tau function. Okay, uh, this conjecture is, was proven two years ago, two independent papers, one of the your presentation and another is myself is Anton Shechkin. Uh, now, uh, now I'm going to uh, relate uh, ge ge generic story about Penleve equation, which I mentioned before, Beckland transformation and algebraic solution to this formula. So as I said before, there's a Back on transformation, which acts on the solution of the Penlevé tau functions. And in terms of this formula, it's just uh, transformation which maps sigma to sigma plus 1 over 2. I mentioned before that this back on transformation has uh, order 2, so, pi, so uh, pi squared maps sigma to sigma plus 1, and this is okay due to periodicity. So this formula is consistent. Uh, uh, using uh, this formula, we can rewrite bilinear relation, total like bilinear relation, as a one equation on the function tau. We, and this equation will be differential, second order differential equation on z, and second order derivative equation on sigma. So we have. Uh, okay. Uh, one, uh, one equation on one function, which is differential on z, and the second order derivative in sigma. Um, algebraic solution, which correspond to special parameters sigma and s, and uh, it is, using this formula, it is easy to find them, it's, uh, given by this formula. And uh, it means that uh, we have an identity. So if you substitute corresponding uh, uh, algebraic tau function, we give the formula of, uh, uh, we give that this exponent is a linear combination of conformal blocks with certain coefficients, uh, which are in this case can be made rational. We can factor out some, this is very simple, and get this. And this is interesting because this conformal blocks itself do not, uh, do not have simple formula, or at least nobody knows it. And it looks like there's no, they are not hypergeometric functions, I think not elliptic, so uh, they are something, some transcendence, and in this form this identity is non-trivial. 
And also I mentioned that uh, conformal dimensions which appeared here are probably now called as conformal dimension twist fields. I mentioned two papers about this twist field, but there are a lot of them. Um, in, this, in this formula, yeah. okay, yes, it depends on normalization. Probably I put it here to conformal blocks oh, um, or, or just for, for good. I don't know what it is. <laughs> but, uh, they should be here. here so. Okay, so we have so, so algebraic solution means that we have certain special relation between conformal blocks and an exponents, and uh, means that the corresponding fields are somehow special. In this case, they are known as a twist fields. But, uh, and this twist is uh, responsible to, uh, to appearance of the square root of z here. So. Okay, so probably I, we are almost done. We we are ready to go to the main part, main subject of my talk, is the Q deformation. So if there are any questions about what I have called, good point to ask. Okay. Now we are going to uh, now Q deformation, and uh, okay, the, uh, we follow uh, so-called geometric approach to the deformer different kind of equation which is which was introduced by Sakai. So the, if I understand correctly history, so in 90s there are, uh, there are many uh, Q differ, many dif different equations, different analogs of Penleve equations, uh, integrable uh, difference analogs uh, were introduced by many people, Jimba Sakai, Gramatikas, Ramani, uh, I think I forgot several names. Uh, and then, uh, in 2001, Sakai into, uh, invented certain unified geometric approach to all of them. Which, uh, um, it is uh, some sort of clever uh, difference analog of the original Penleves property. That we, we study Penleves property means that we study differential equation without uh, movable branching points. Sakai introduced some sort of a different analog, different analog of this property. Uh, to make this, uh, to to go to the answer, then uh, to each uh, Sakai assign a difference equation to the rational surface, which obtained by blow up of nine points on CP two. Here, cheating a little bit, so these nine points don't mean that all are lines CP2. Maybe we take one blow up and then take another blow up after pre, on the pre-image of the, the few, on the additional exceptional divisor and so on, but morally nine blow ups of CP2. Uh, then for each uh, such surface, Sakai assigned certain combinatorial data. Uh, lattice, which is generated by irreducible components of the anti-canonical divisor. And this lattice is called surface lattice, uh, as, and as before in Komoto approach to differential equation, the intersection form on this lattice coincide with the form on the certain affine root lattice. And uh, this is a table of all possible intersection forms on, of, of R, so all possible R's, so corresponding to all, all possible rational surfaces, all possible different uh, difference equations. So you see, after Q deformation, so before we have uh, say eight, uh, after, before Q deformation we have we say have eight uh, equations. Now we have, I think, like twice more. Uh, so this part is the same was uh, was. For differential equation, but that means that it is the same uh, for e for each of d. For example, for this d eight one. No, okay, for this d four one, we can say it both differential or difference equation. So we have uh, really we have more equations for good deformation. And uh, maybe I should comment that this for a part of this diagram correspond to Q difference equation. And this part corresponds to D difference equations. And 
sites I want to study. Q deformation I will leave in the first row. Mm, difference is a, you have function on Z, and, and uh, for Q difference, Z is belongs to C star, not equal to zero. And for D difference, Z belongs to C. So, for example, it depends on what kind of singularities. Uh, so, for example, you can look for the meromorphic solution in C star or in C. So, this is some sort of difference. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah, exactly. For each, uh, for each D, I can assign differential equation, I can assign difference equation. Uh, if I take any of A, say this, and take this limit, then the, in the limit I can have differential equation assigned to this D series. Yes. Difference equations A and D. Uh, two di for example, two different difference equations can have the same limit. So theoretically speaking, there are infinite, uh, infinitely many ways to f f to invent d difference equation which has the same limit. But we are looking for good ones which sat should satisfy some sort of difference Penlevé property. It should be. Uh, if I understand correctly, the limit of the, this equation uh, uh, is not Penleve, it should be something elementary. So, Penleve, differential Penleve equation lives here. So, from A3, you can go to D4. This is called Q Penleve 6 equation, which is invented by Jim Ben Sakai. Mm -hmm. Any more questions? Okay, uh, there's an another part of Sakai story which I sh want to mention. The, uh, to each uh, uh, surface, so one can assign so-called du some sense dual data, uh, uh, which I did not where R, R orthogonal, it is orthogonal complement to the lattice R, R which I mentioned before. And here is a picture of the corresponding R's. I don't have time to, exp to explain details of such notation, or such, or even this notation, but so look to Sakai paper, but <laughs> I will sometimes use one of the table, another, sometimes another. <laughs> the only thing which I can say is that we have two lattices, R and R orthogonal, and the rank of this group is 10, since we have 9 blow-ups. So the sum of the ranks of R and R orthogonal is also 10. Uh, such lattice R orthogonal is useful in order to describe the group of uh, discrete dynamics of the corresponding Penleve equations, or whole group of uh, disc, uh, whole discrete group which acts which form our equation. And this group, uh, roughly speaking, has the form. We take a while group of the corresponding affine root lattice, affine, yes, uh, affine root system, and um, take also semi-direct product of the external automorphism of the corresponding affine root system. And this is the whole symmetry group. Therefore, the lattice R orthogonal is called symmetry lattice. So R is called surface lattice, and R orthogonal is called symmetry lattice. Just notation. Okay, and on the next slide, I put both lattices R and R orthogonal, both tables. You see, see here, for example, that here is rank 2, here is rank 8, so sum of the rank is equal to 10 everywhere. And uh, again, I will speak about very concrete equation. So in uh, differential equation lives here, is D81. So the corresponding difference equation should be uh, connected by arrow with this equation. 
So, and I want to study Q deform in sciences. I want Q deform conformal blocks. So, my choice will be this A71 prime. Okay. I put it in the box and draw it in the So, as before, uh, this is some sort of broad picture. And now, in the next slide, I will uh, say you in some details what is, this, what is the meaning of this equation. What is mean of this, at least of this notation. So you can forget all the reason about this very large tables. But <laughs> okay. Uh, we have, so as I said, so a difference equation is assigned to a rational surface. In this case, we have uh, several, in any case, we have not one surface, but certain modular space of such surfaces. And uh, this, uh, we can choose certain co coordinates on the space, which I forgot, I omit the exact definition, but they, I denote them by z and q below. And moreover, uh, on each surface, I has its own coordinates, which I denote by f and g. Uh, now, as I said before, a uh, group, uh, group of disk transformation is a semi-direct product of the while group of the symmetry lattice, of the root system of symmetry lattice, and external uh, automorphism, which is now uh, is a dihedral de group, uh, group of symmetries of square. Uh, I also put here a presentation of this group into, uh, using ge generator relations. S0 and S1 are uh, reflections of while group. So they have relations, they both are square equal to 1 and no other. And uh, P1 and P2 are generators of dihedral group. P2 is a rotation of 90 degrees, and P1 is a reflection. So this satisfies this equation. And here is the action of the dehedral group of the while group is written. Uh, we have, so actually, uh, out, out, external automorphism of this group, uh, of the, this root lattice, this root system, is Z2, which we can permute to root, to simple roots. And uh, P1, um, here should be S1, I think. Okay, and P1 should, uh, I think, permute them. Ah, no, 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 P2 permutes two roots as, uh, so, so permute to serve corresponding reflection as zero and as one. And P2 squared and P, P1 commutes with this affine. And the action of W is given by the following formulas. This, uh, this formulas come from geometry of this uh, rational surface, but I don't have time and to explain what, uh, what, is the, uh, what is the definition of such surface and how to use its geometry in order to write this formula, so just give an answer. And uh, all this done by Sakaya. This is how formula looks like. The, uh, f uh, the most uh, non-trivial parts of the formulas are certain rational functions. Uh, for one can check that uh, transformation defined by this formula satisfies these relations. So for, for, for such formulas, it's more or less clear, but for such rational functions, this it looks for me non-trivial, but it is okay. Mm. So the small group acts both on coordinates on the modular space of surface and coordinates on the su surface, so on the total space of the point of bundle. Acceleration surface. Uh, it's a blow up of CP2 in nine points. And, uh, and, uh, but the such combinatorial data, uh, we, uh, these nine points are not generic. So some of them lies on the pre image of another one and so on. And the sort of degeneration 
is encoded, some, have some, uh, there is some combinatorial description of the sort of degeneration which correspond to this surface. So actually we have only four points on CP2 and so on. Three pre, uh, three, um, then three points in pre image of one of them and so on and so on. This uh, lattice, uh, so this coordinate parameter Z and Q uh, parameterize the de this de degeneration. So combinatorial data is the same. Maybe I'm answering the wrong question. No? <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> More questions? <laughs> okay, let's proceed further. Uh, I also introduced uh, element T in this group. This uh, element of infinite order, so translation is W. And uh, in order to I use standard notation for different equations. I denote by x upper, by t, uh, t of x and x down, t inverse of x. Then you see t uh, shift z to q z and t inverse shift z to q inverse z. These formulas are obtained from this, from these formulas. It is impossible to check since they are on the different slides, but it remains to believe. <laughs> And for function f and g, we have certain rational function. And uh, using this formula, we have this. We can write one equation of function g. And I will say in next slide that, uh, but I can say it even now that this equation is actually is actual q deformation of the original second order differential Penlevier equation. So if in the limit q goes to one, this uh, in the in the leading order. Uh, this equation goes to Pendever 3, 3 equation. Of course, this limit should be arranged. So uh, Q goes to 1, or it goes with G and Z. So Z goes to 0 in certain speed. G is also goes to 0. But so there is this certain regime under which this equation goes to this Pendever equation. In another regime, it can go to something elementary and so on. Uh, Okay, now I want to write formula for tau function. In order to q-deform original conjecture, I want to write formula for tau function. And the first question is, what is the definition of the tau function? And for differential equation, Akamoto gave the original definition using Hamiltonian formalism and so on. And for difference equation, uh, at least as I understand, situation is not so simple. For example, for our concrete equation, uh, we haven't found in the literature the definition, so actually we invented the definition of the tau function, but following the pseudo approach. And I should mention there are, uh, probably there is no convenient definition of the tau function for such equation, but there are several approaches. So I mentioned last paper by Naomi, but there are Actually, there are several papers of uh, Naomi and his co-authors. And I also want, want to mention a paper by Rink and Borodin, who defined a tau function not for Pendeve equation, but for linear difference equations. And Pendeve, uh, differential Pendeve equations arises from as a, as a problem for differ linear differential equations, so there should exist relation between Q deform Penleve equation and Q difference problem. So probably there is a relation between their definition and definition which we need, but this is not done. So I, this I just mentioned. Actually, we follow somehow pseudo approach, but it is not necessary to know what what is his approach. I put it as a theorem here. So we can introduce four, four tau function. Is there some reason why four tau functions uh, looks to be good choice uh, and define action of the transformation p1, p2, s1, s0 on them by the following formulas. And also then find the action of the t. So these four columns are were already given below given above in the previous slides. And these formulas are uh, our definition, and one can check that uh, all, all relations are satisfied. All relations in this group are satisfied. 
moreover, one can check that if f and g are expressed in terms of tau function by this formula, which are, look very similar to formula which expressed a differential function, a solution of the differential Penderville equation in terms of tau function, if, so if f and g are expressed in this formula, then uh, the action on the tau function is consistent with the action on doubled on f and g, which I mentioned before. And, uh, okay. Um, uh, the I wrote second order differential equation on G in terms of tau functions. This equation reduces to system of two bilinear, again, like Toda uh, equations on tau functions. Tau, uh, it's uh, used two tau functions, tau one, tau three. Uh, and last comment that uh, we I have ma made several checks that on the, and uh, that as follows. So on the level tau function, uh, all what I can get uh, action of W uh, is a Laurent, even a series, a Laurent uh, polynomial as here. So for G, it is not true. Here we have a real, we have rational function, G minus Z with denominator G minus Z. But if I will act on tau functions, I will get only uh, Laurent polynomials. And probably this fact could be explained using some relation to cluster algebras, but I don't know. But this looks like one more hint that our definition of the tau function is a good one. Now, uh, I consider all my function which I introduced, f, g, and tau as a function on the variable z, and also q. Uh, so I write action of t as a shift on, on z, so h up is h of qz, and so on. Then, uh, uh, equation on function g uh, has this form, and here I can take the limit q goes to 1 and get a differential in the equation. And for tau function, our goal will be the same as was, as was informed by Gamma Yun Yorgov Nisavi to introduce only one function tau, depend on two parameters, u and s. Here I use u, but u is, uh, one can say that u is a q in power to sigma. So, and sigma and s are direct analogs of sigma and s in continuous formula. And for this function, we set tau 1 given by this formula, tau 3 given by this formula, uh, assume periodicity, and uh, we, we want to have such bilinear relation. This bilinear relation is equivalent to bilinear relation On the previous slide, it works slowly. Maybe it's not. So uh, this is my problem: uh, to find function tau, which will satisfy this bilinear relation, maybe also periodicity, also periodicity. Then I will find a solution. I will find uh, uh, function g by formula which I which was on previous slide. So in this sense, I will solve difference in the equation. Yes, it's a type. Here should be inverse. Thank you. And probably this t looks different from this t, and this is also type. And this t also looks different. This is also type. There are several types. Uh, more questions? Okay. Now we almost come to the main conclusion, main conjecture. Um, so main, so main uh, conjecture will be on the next, main definition will be on the next slide, but before, in order to write it, I need to recall what is Q-deformed conformal blocks. So I wrote this tau function in terms of the Q-deformed conformal blocks. I will, I will write it. And, uh, 
But before I need to recall what is a deformed conformal block. Um, <laughs> First, in, uh, just uh, in words, it's, uh, this uh, square of vector vector of the virus of, of virus algebra. Uh, so it has the same representation theoretic definition as usual conformal block. But for actual uh, calculation, we use another definition or, that, uh, or statement. This this function is a Nikrasov instanton partition function for pure SU2 gauge theory, five dimension. Uh, so the, uh, therefore, this function has an explicit combinatorial form. Summation of a pair of partitions, and here is the pro this Nikrasov type product. So the function defined as a power series in Z. Uh, here I use two parameters u1 and u2, but actually this function depends only on, on the ratio of them u1 over u2. So everywhere. I will uh, ju write just you. Also, uh, during the, also today, my talk, Q1 inverse will equal to Q2 will equal to Q. For the Virasora case, it will correspond to the uh, C equal 1 in terms of topological vertexes. Vertex, it means that uh, our topological vertex is not refined, so that's where we go. And uh, this formula have, uh, Maybe better to say you two, if you want. And we take a limit. We don't have this u uh, one counterpart. So for, but to be honest, I not really understand the difference in this notation for s two and u two. Maybe you will explain. So for for in the representation theoretic definition, we do not use uh, additional Heisenberg. We use just Virasora. But for in the taker limit, this is the same. For Heisenberg, we take the one. So maybe this is not important. Uh, but so uh, this two is essential. So u one is not. <laughs> this is not uh, okay. Uh, I would like to put as a, as a lemma that this series is is a, a series converged. As a series, as a series on, on, on Z, and uh, for, uh, and converge for if absolute value of Q is not equal to one, and U is also not Q in power n, so the, for such U we have poles. And at last, I mentioned this. This is function is a topological string partition function for local P1 times P1 geometry. So, so this function up to simple factor. Infinite Pagami symbol squared is a topological string partition function. So this function f, which has three interpretations, if you want, q or conformal blocks, Nikras and string partition function, and topological string partition function, is the main ingredient of the conjecture. Definition. The tau function will be given by the following formula. Uh, what we have here, the f is the uh, same as before, uh, q deformed uh, conformal block, or Nikrasov partition function of pure SU2 theory. Uh, the main new, the new ingredient here is this function c, also with this factor, but doesn't. And this function c, uh, if you remember, in Conformal formula, we have z in some power uh, divided of the products of uh, Barnes g function. This is some sort of analog of Barnes g function, and this is some sort of analog of this z in some power. Mm, and in order to, uh, stay, uh, to state main conjecture that this tau function is a solution of the bilinear difference equations, we need to impose uh, following conditions function c system of three conditions. Uh, this condition can be viewed as a second order difference, difference equations as a function of two variables, u and z. Here is a second order difference uh, operators with respect to u, here with respect to z, and here with respect to both of them. Uh, 
function r is not essential, one can say it is that r is equal to 1, or one can say that r satisfies homogeneous version of this equation where right side is equal to 1. This is not necessary for Bellini equation, but it is sometimes convenient to impose uh, that functions u and r satisfy symmetry respect to u to u inverse. I recall that conformal block satisfies as symmetry, and also these products satisfies as possess a symmetry, so it may be convenient, but it is not necessary for Bellini equations. This is the definition. So, so the most non-trivial part here is, of course, function c. For example, after such formulas, you can ask whether this function exists, and the answer is positive. This function exists, and there are a lot of such functions. Here I put two, uh, two possible solutions. One of them is actually more or less the same uh, as was before QD formation. It's something like z in some power, but now this power, which is called sigma before, now it is a logarithm q over logarithm q, logarithm u over logarithm q. Therefore, we have some such strange formula. And advantage of the, this formula is that the, uh, the in this case, function will be meromorphic in z, meromorphic in u. This function, of course, not. Mm, I don't know whether is a, it is a good question, what is a good, best answer for function c. This function is defined up to the multiplication periodic function in both u and z, or even of this multiplication by solution of the homogeneous equation, which were on the previous slide. Okay, I don't know. Uh, at least such function exists. I have two rather random examples. Uh, I also know that from the definition, it's clear that the, uh, our function satisfy periodicity condition with respect to u, as written here. And if C and R, and R are universe invariant, then the corresponding time function will be also universe invariant. Now, conjecture that function tau defined on the previous slide uh, satisfies this Bellini equation. And as I said before, this Bellini equation is actually equivalent to the corresponding Q difference in the equation. This main conjecture. Q difference in the equation of the surface type A7 and symmetry. Uh, one can rewrite this equation as a Bellini equation conformal block. I put it as a theorem, but actually this is a rather long but straightforward calculation. But I don't know proof of this. Uh, so this conjecture is equivalent, but anyway, you can say that this, okay, and this uh, relation is a conjecture. So this is not proven. No, no, this conjecture is. What is proven that this relation is equivalent to this, but it is not big. Deal. No, no, I know the paper, but I don't know it was this relation. Did it fall when you had theories for any of your theories? Do you see infinity in many degrees? I don't know. I'm not sure that this is related. My understanding, I don't know. I don't know sure this is related. But okay, I just had to comments that, first of all, we, of course, we have checked this relation uh, up to certain power of z, and second, we exp checked uh, this equation, conformal limit of this equation, and this uh, additional check, because uh, ch up to certain power of z, we use only first, say, three, or I don't know, maybe five 
sum on the left side and on the right side, but in conformal limit, in limit where Q goes to one, we have checked all terms. And everything's okay. Continuous limit is, is true. So I think this conjecture is true, but uh, let me briefly mention two other parts of the uh, uh, of the differential Penlevé equation uh, and uh, this, their co deformation. First, I, to I told you that there is a background transformation for, difference for differential Penlevé 3 equation, and here we have also analog of this difference transform uh, of this background transformation. Uh, this analog permutes tau 1 and tau 3, and this is clear. Which is the second, uh, which is not so clear, it is a question on algebraic solutions. I, I recall that uh, Pindavea, differential Pendevere 3 d8 equation has one, two algebraic solution plus minus square root of z. The same holds here, and this is even simpler. You can, during my talk, substitute this g of z in this equation and get that everything is okay, this equation is satisfied. I don't know whether it is classification of, of algebraic solution of this equation, but anyway, naive analog is a solution. And therefore, uh, we can substitute this solution to the conjecture and get the following results. So if uh, tau function is u inverse invariant, then the, for special values of u and s, S as before is plus minus one, and Q is and U should be square root of Q here. This given by is is this essentially reduces to this double Pagano product. In terms of conformal blocks, uh, this formula is equivalent to the relation that this double Pagano product is equal to the sum of Q deformed conformal blocks. This is a Q certain Q rational coefficients. And here I have the power of z, <laughs> so probably I forgot it in the first slide. Uh, let me make one more comment and, uh, about this uh, programmer product, and then I go to the conclusion. That uh, uh, I said that algebraic solution for Penlevé d8 is an exponent. Uh, tau for correspond tau function is exponent. And this should be compared to the uh, Nikrasov partition function for pure U1 theory, which is also exponent. Here, algebraic solution is a double Pag Pagamer product, and this also should be compared with a Nikrasov, can, could be compared with Nikrasov partition function for, for pure U1 theory, five dimensional, which is also uh, one infinite product. Uh, I so the fact, so uh, the fact that uh, exponent, the Q deformation of the exponent is such infinite product is known. Um, okay, any infinite product can be viewed as a deformation of the exponent, but I think uh, this relation means that such infinite product is natural here. Uh, also, we have the same phenomena here. We have exponent of z, and here is exponent of square root of z. And in terms of CFT, it relates to the fact that we actually consider twist fields. We need to take, okay. and here we also have the same square roots of z. Okay, I have three more slides and no, five more minutes. Uh, okay, first comment is that uh, the main statement is conjecture, so if I consider myself as a mathematician, so the, my question is to prove them. If at least try. Uh, if I okay, if I forgot about this question, then the next question is to generalize. And uh, now I recall this big table here. Wrote the so-called symmetry table of the symmetry table for symmetry lattices. And I recall that we live here now. Uh, uh, naive conjecture is that uh, for this line. For this uh, Penlevé equation, uh, this Penlevé equation are related to a uh, five-dimensional class partition function with n fundamental multiplets. So here I discussed case where n is equal to zero, and 
uh, naive conjecture uh, that for any n, at least from here, is this holds. So n is not is less or equal to seven. Uh, this, uh, for example, it is known that if n is less than equal than four, four, then we can can take q goes to one limit of this equation, and uh, uh, get that uh, there should be a relation between corresponding differential Penleve equations and f corresponding four-dimensional Nikrasov partition function. And this relation is actually known due to gamma Yorkov and Lisa V for, so for, for this case, we know that there exists a limit. Another important, or maybe no important relation is that uh, 20 years ago, Seiberg argued that uh, this gauge series, so SU2, here should be SU2 somewhere, SU2 uh, here, SU2 gauge series, or U2, I don't know, with n fundamental multiples uh, has a global shear symmetry e n plus one. And, but uh, to be honest, I don't know whether exists any. This is, I don't think that this is coincidence. But I don't know any explicit relation between uh, this fact that this gauge series has such global symmetry and our desire that uh, our hope that the corresponding uh, that. Uh, Q, tau function of the corresponding Q Penleve equations can be given in terms of the cross partition function of this gauge series. And of course, I don't know. Uh, where, here, we have, uh, actual group of symmetries is a affine whale group. So, where how affine part comes? So, probably this affine part comes uh, due to the fact that we have not only one cross partition function, there's a whole series, but this equation may be more interesting than proof, but this some so it is. Okay, second part of the discussion, and uh, that I, from the, uh, our, if you look at the original of the formula for this group, uh, which uh, you see that uh, I use only part of this group, only shift T. And also p to squared, which is uh, which goes to the backlog transformation of the dif corresponding uh, differential equation. So this part is a, has clear meaning in the limit, but actual discrete group is larger, uh, and it is, uh, so this actual group will look uh, w, looks to be new phenomena which arise after Q deformation, and it would be interesting to understand. In, this in terms of the our formula of the tau function. So, actually, this uh, seems to reduce in this uh, such simple case to sim to certain transformation z to the inverse and q to the q inverse. And second transformation transparent more or less science conformal blocks has such symmetry and also Pagamer functions has such symmetry and so on. But to z goes to the inverse. I don't know whether it's possible to say something about our formula of tau function and say some correct statement which involves our formula for tau function and also say symmetry. Uh, naive idea that this symmetry should uh, means or should be equivalent to certain symmetry of conformal blocks. And, okay, two comments, but uh, uh, first, about the symmetry. So, uh, I recall that this uh, uh, this q deform conformal blocks is more or less equivalent to string partition function for local p1 times p1 geometry. And for such geometries, there exists fiber-based duality, which intersects to interchange two factors of p1. And in terms of this function, this duality has the form. But this identity is a formal identity, uh, for the identity of formal power series in variables u and uz. And if absolute value of q is, uh, not, is not equal to 1, this series do not converge. So, uh, so 
So I don't know how to use it. So if I define this conformal blocks as I did before as a power series on Z, then as I stated before, the series converge, everything is okay. So for absolute value of Q not equal to one, left side uh, is defined, right side is defined, but they are not equal. And uh, as a power formal power series, they are equal, but this not, but do not converge. So I don't know whether any relation between fiber-based duality and this equation z goes to z inverse. And probably this equation is more or less is very related to the question on the previous slide. What is the relation between uh, the symmetries of uh, this affine group symmetry and symmetry from Zyberg's paper? Okay, and my last remark will be more or less the same as in the previous talk. Uh, I'm <laughs> I mentioned another paper by Giulio, Alessandro, and Alba, uh, the, who constructed uh, Q also Q who also constructed Q deformation of the formula for Penelope's three tau function using the, this paper. And maybe mentioned in the previous talk and many, many other, many other. Uh, I ju just wrote here two sentences and maybe uh, Albert will explain more. Uh, that, uh, it's uh, interesting to note they work in different regions, so in their case absolute value of Q is equal to 1 and if I know correctly this approach are not completely, our approach are not uh, somehow related. But I don't know details, and maybe Albert will say more in the next talk.